quick little intro uh, on the machine. So it's a Bernina, the model is 7411. And um, we can have a quick look under the hood. Beautiful machine. All the red dots is where um, oil is needed. So that's for the maintenance. This is the bobbin winder, which deploys like this and works manually. I'll show you later. Never put oil on this belt, obviously, otherwise big trouble. The needle unit. So the needles are changed by unscrewing this screw. It's very important that the needle is fully up and it's also important not to over tighten this screw. And the needles have a groove and the groove should always face um, us. We continue. Um, this is to select uh, the needle position. So if you look carefully, when I move this, the needle will change position on zero. It's actually at the middle and it's uh, to do straight stitches. When the selector is on four, the needle is going to sew in zigzag. This is the number of stitches per, per inches. So the bigger the number, the larger uh, the stitches are. So on a small number here, we will have many more stitches per inch than on a bigger number. When we push this lever completely up while sewing, the machine will go in reverse. So we do this at the beginning and at the end to lock the stitches. This selector, it's advised not to play too much with it. It's to sew the um, buttons. And this is going to drop the plate. So this is on this side. It's, you can see, zigzag and uh, straight stitches. It is uh, going to work the feeder. Um, if you remove this, it drops the feeder be underneath the plate. And so you can um, do embroideries or you can uh, fill a gap or a hole in the fabric. Most of the time, obviously, we are using this setting. We are going to sew for a very long time with the same setting. Uh, for example, two straight stitches without having to reverse. We can block this setting so the lever won't move anymore. And this is sort of a blocker. Um, you won't be able to reverse. This little dial is for the tensioning unit. It's usually uh, not advised not to play too much with it. Uh, you see these dials here. They indicate uh, the middle position. We just leave it like that. The top panel. This is the selector uh, for the type of sewing we want to do. So. When it's on this position, it's generally for zigzag and straight sewing. But if I want to do embroideries or if I want to change the pattern, I have to put this here and then move this. Then it's like a clutch. Then we can move the different pattern that we need to use. I'm not using this, so I put it back here. Quick recap on uh, the settings for getting us ready to stitch. Make sure you are... Um, this lever is down for zigzag or straight, and it's none of these programs. Same here, it's on the zero one. Now we have the needle position. So zero is for straight uh, um, uh, stitches and four is for zigzag, okay? Now make sure this one is on this side for zigzag or straight. This is um, the, the number of stitches per per distance, so the bigger the number, the longer the stitches, smaller number, more stitches per inch, and full up is to reverse the, the, the sewing, so at the beginning, at the end, to lock the stitches. That's about it. The plug, uh, the plug for the power goes in a certain way. This side up, I marked it so we can't be uh, uh, fooled, and that's how it goes in here. going to access the bobbin which is underneath it's a little bit tricky because this machine was not supposed to be uh, on a box like this uh, so we have to lift the whole thing you open this little uh, remove make sure this is on open and then you lift the whole thing holding 
get in there, there is a little lever. It's difficult to see, but you grab the bobbin, okay? The bobbin is in the navel, and you have a little lever here that allows you to uh, get the bobbin out. It's well oiled, it's not really coming out, but there is the bobbin, all right? Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to wind a bobbin. So I have my bobbin here, which is empty. I am going to open the bobbin winding unit, which is this one, deploy this arm, um, get my thread, let's do an orange one. Uh, any of these, I usually put the one further out. Um, the thread goes around this um, arm then around this one then we're gonna put it a little bit on the bobbin just for the beginning right then this one goes here make sure there's a bit of tension at the beginning it's not slack or catching anywhere all right now, very, very important before winding the bobbin, you don't want the thread to be going into the needles. Otherwise, it's just going to go and accumulate over there on the, on the cradle of the bobbin and make an absolute mess. It happened to me once. So now when I wind the bobbin, I actually completely remove the main thread, the top thread, to have only to deal with this one. And um, make sure we are plugged. Then we can go apply the engine and push this lever, okay? Small problem here. Maybe I went a bit too fast. Continue. Better. Okay, my bobbin is winded, I'm happy. Cut the thread. Take the bobbin out. Close the unit. And my bobbin is ready. Now to put it back in the cradle, that's, it has to go in a certain way. Uh, it's very important to make sure that there's a bit of oil in there, so I'm gonna try to Remove it a bit. So it's a bit counterintuitive. The bobbin needs to spin that way, anti-clockwise in the cradle when you face it like this. So when you pull on the thread. So you, you want to put it like that, but it's, not, it, it's actually the other way around because this thread needs to go through this slit here. There's a little slit and then back in here. And then you make a test and you want to make sure that when you pull, it's turning anti-clockwise, which is now correct. Then you're done. Okay, I don't want time to put the bobbin back into its cradle. Uh, so it's a bit, uh, again, a bit tricky because of the, the box. Um, I'm going to lift this. Um, so the key is to hold it the same way you, you hold it, like you're facing the back of it. And I usually put the springs towards more on the right side because you can't really see, you have to go as a feel. So I lift the machine being quite careful, not it wants to sometimes completely capsize. So hold it firmly, get in there and um, the spring more on the right side, put it in the cradle. There's only one way to get in. So you should hear a click. Um, so try to feel until it goes in. That's it. You hear the click. It's correct. Bring the thing down carefully again. Right. Then we lock it. Good. We're set. The top uh, stitch uh, 
pretty easy, but make sure you don't have any um, knots or any, you know, any problem here. Uh, the first step is to go through this um, loop here, then through this long uh, sort of gorge here. All right, this is pretty straightforward. Comes out here, then on um, the front panel, it goes first under this guy and you will see that there is a there is a small hoop in the big hoop you want to make sure you are going through the small hoop like that right then it goes up here yeah. Then it goes down here. Then there is a hoop above the needle, goes in that hoop, and then through the needle, and through the needle always from the front towards the back. Make sure you don't have knots uh, front towards the back. So that's the painful part. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. When it's too much of a struggle, I use this little device. I put the foot down to have an easier access. Needle is in, the thread is in the needle. Uh, we go under the foot. Okay, we keep a bit of tension and we're gonna rotate always uh, towards you by hand um, the wheel so to catch uh, the uh, bottom thread so um, it is going down hopefully catch the bottom thread I pull lightly on the yeah I got it once I've got it I'm gonna catch both of them and pull them towards the back both of them towards the back just like that and we are good to go good to go we've got our thread going at the back i'm gonna start with a straight stitch so i'm on zero here um, it's gonna be a long stitch so i'm four here the maximum length and um <laughs> got two pieces of canvas here as a demo um, put them here at the back together foot down now I like to do the first stitch by hand so I use my hand to spin the wheel and um, do the first stitch to make sure everything is good seems to be going fine yep so we're ready to go um, before you start the motor, you want to make sure that you don't have any slack on your thread. It's, uh, it's got some tension and uh, it's all good. I don't like to go too fast, so I just, uh, you know, take it easy. I guide the machine. Okay, now I'm going to do a square. So um, when the needle is down, I lift the foot, turn. Put the foot down, back, go, stop, lift the foot, turn, and put the foot. And a bit of reverse to lock my stitch and to ease the job make sure the needle is out and I slip the job by helping with the, my hand to get the thing out slowly and cut the thread and uh, yeah it's good uh, we don't have any orange thread on top and looks uh, okay 
I'm not too bad. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna do the zigzag stitch. So this lever is uh, pulled to be on number four here. Um, and the foot is down, my thread are at the back. I'm gonna go uh, um, a bit of reverse at the beginning to lock my stitch toe. Like, like always, I do the first by hand to make sure everything is good. I like it, it's some tension in my, in my thread, so I'm ready to go slowly, a bit of reverse, and then back. Hit the foot. Finish with a bit of reverse. Et voilà my zigzag. Uh, one color at the back, one color in the front. Because it's quite heavy duty canvas, my beginning and end are a bit um, heavy because I'm doing the reverse to lock the stitch. That's it. Voila!